Greetings, we hope all is well. This is the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Senior and Friends. Genesis 1-1, KJV, states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And 2 Corinthians 5-7, KJV, states, For we walk by faith, not by sight. While Romans 10:17 KJV, says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Which brings us to Hosea 4:6, KJV, that states, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Welcome to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast. I am your host Minister Larry Montgomery. Senior. The sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www.theauthorscorner.online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. Hello. We're here again. Thank God. (laughs) Um, This week, we want to talk about um, forgiveness. And there's a couple of reasons why we should have a a full understanding of the word uh, forgiveness. We're going to open with a brief presentation on what the natural uh, definition of forgiveness is. Then we're going to go a little deeper with another present five minute presentation. And then we're going to kind of close out with a biblical understanding, a fuller biblical understanding of the word forgiveness and why it's important to us or to those who are Christians. Um, one, the, 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 the primary, one, a part of the primary reason that forgiveness is important to Christians is that the whole purpose of our relationship with God is based on forgiveness. God created man, starting with Adam, uh, for fellowship with him. Uh, The human being is different from any other creature created by God. And with that carries a, I'm trying to think of the word for it, but it carries a responsibility to us, first off, to be appreciative um, that he did uh, think enough of uh, man to create man. And secondly, that he cherished the reason why Uh, he created man and that was to fellowship with him and when man we're talking about adam again um disobeyed him because we talked about disobedience the other week that series uh last month and when man disobeyed his direct command not to partake of the uh tree of knowledge um I would imagine that it broke God's heart because God is not one to be nilly willy. You know, sometimes he's up, sometimes he's down. That's not him. He's always who he is. And so that betrayal, when God warned man not to do that, because he didn't have to warn him. 
Mm. Cause man, you know, you're in the garden of Eden, do, do whatever you want to do. And, and it's cool. But for obedience and for who God is, his character, is I'm not having that. And I'm not having disobedience. I'm not having a situation where, as I um, explain to you or say to you, don't do this, you do it anyway. I mean, yes, you have free will. And the free will isn't based on the fact that, well, you, man, um, can do anything he wants. No, the free will is based on the fact that anything you do, man, should be because you appreciate and love God. So those things that would make God happy are the things that you should be willing to do. And in order to confirm that you're doing things because you want to make God happy, there are opportunities to do things that will not make him happy. So let's get started and talk about um, forgiveness. Let me start with, uh, first we'll take a quick commercial and then we'll go right to the uh, first presentation. Heavenly Invitation by Dr. Larry Montgomery, Sr. Are you going to heaven? Ever ask how can I guarantee my eternal destination? Want to know what is the difference between Shoal, Hades, Hell, the Lake of Fire? Ever wonder did Jesus go to Hell between his death and resurrection? Do you know where Hell is? Question is Satan the master of Hell? Want to know what is Purgatory? Can you tell me what happens after death? Do you know the nine facts about heaven? What are the ten distinct differences between faith and unbelief? Read The Heavenly Invitation by Dr. Larry Montgomery, Sr. Available on Amazon and at the author's corner dot online. Order your copy today. Thanks, and God bless. Forgiveness. Letting go of grudges and bitterness. When someone you care about hurts you, you can hold on to anger and resentment, or embrace forgiveness and move forward. Who hasn't been hurt by the actions or words of another? Perhaps a parent constantly criticized you growing up, a colleague sabotaged a project or your partner had an affair. Or maybe you've had a traumatic experience, such as being physically or emotionally abused by someone close to you. These wounds can leave lasting feelings of resentment, bitterness and anger, sometimes even hatred. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness means different things to different people. But in general, it involves an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. The act that hurt or offended you might always be with you. But working on forgiveness can lessen that act's grip on you. It can help free you from the control of the person who harmed you. Sometimes, forgiveness might even lead to feelings of understanding, empathy and compassion for the one who hurt you. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or excusing the harm done to you. It also doesn't necessarily mean making up with the person who caused the harm. Forgiveness brings a kind of peace that allows you to focus on yourself and helps you go on with life. Why is it so easy to hold a grudge? Being hurt by someone, particularly someone you love and trust, can cause anger, sadness and confusion. If you dwell on hurtful events or situations, grudges filled with resentment and hostility can take root. If you allow negative feelings to crowd out positive feelings, you might find yourself swallowed up by bitterness or a sense of injustice. Some people are naturally more forgiving than others. But even if you tend to hold a grudge, almost anyone can learn to be more forgiving. What happens if I can't forgive someone? Forgiveness can be hard, especially if the person who hurt you doesn't admit wrongdoing. What if the person I'm forgiving doesn't change? Getting another person to change isn't the point of forgiveness. It's about focusing on what you can control in the here and now. Think of forgiveness more about how it can change your life by bringing you peace, happiness, and emotional and spiritual healing. Forgiveness can take away the power the other person continues to have in your life. What if I'm the one who needs forgiveness? The first step is to honestly assess and acknowledge the wrongs you've done and how they have affected others. 
Avoid judging yourself too harshly. If you're truly sorry for something you've said or done and want forgiveness, consider reaching out to those you've harmed. Speak of your sincere sorrow or regret. Ask for forgiveness without making excuses. You can't force someone to forgive you. Others need to move to forgiveness in their own time. Remember, forgiveness is a process. Whatever happens, commit to treating others with compassion, empathy, and respect. We can talk about forgiveness uh, from many different perspectives, many different reasons for it um, happening. Um, I don't think anyone purposely does something to hurt someone because they want to put this, they want to put someone in a position of forgiving or not forgiving. Okay, that's, this is kind of the reverse of that whole thing. One of the things that we talk about or may experience as Christians is hurt. Um, we as humans and Christians uh, can be hurt uh, many ways uh, uh, by the loss of someone uh, dear to us, by uh, physical um, abuse, um, by mental abuse and anguish, um, people steal from you, people punch on you, whatever, you know, but the first thing that comes to mind when we start talking about uh, God and the church and Christians is church hurt. And church hurt is something that <clears throat> many people unfortunately experience and there are probably a couple of reasons why these things happen the first reason would definitely be because we're all humans uh, none of us are perfect no one not one hear me clearly not one of us is perfect the only perfect being was jesus christ and he was a god he is God, and he came down as a man, as a human in the flesh. And in the flesh, <laughs> there's a potential for uh, <laughs> potential for potential for hurt, sin, <laughs> and all that other things. And so, with that, and one of the reasons, as we look at the reason why God sent um jesus to um atone for our sins our sinful life sin being the first step the first issue that caused hurt in the relationship between god and man and so when we talk about church hurt um we're human beings we have, he's, he's given us leaders. Uh, and a leader does not mean that the leader is perfect. And if you have a leader who believes or prides themselves on the fact that they believe that they're perfect, you need to take a hard look at that person. And not so much as to prove that they're not perfect, but for you to understand that they're not perfect. And see, this offers up an opportunity to find one in a position to seriously think about forgiving someone, and that might be that leader. What's important here, and we talk about church, right? It's the Bible has given us instruction on dealing with disobedience um, and well, well disobedience pretty much captures anything that you could do uh, in the church that uh, could cause an environment or an effort for um, someone to be hurt and uh, 
forgiveness being something that would be an outgrowth of that. Church hurt. We're talking about the leadership and the congregations or congregant in the church. There are specific steps in dealing with that. And they're in the Bible. It's not something that you have to research on your own that you could find that is biblical in nature, but not in the Bible per se. It is in the Bible directly. And there, I believe, is four or five steps to that. But the point is, is that people are the ones that have to make those steps the way God would have them to make it. And then if we can't find ourselves in a place of forgiveness, forgiving one another, whether you're the leader forgiving the, the congregant of what their disobedience was or the congregant questioning the leaderships and then having to forgive, having to ask for forgiveness for their disobedience. I hope I made that clear. Um, <clears throat> With church hurt, now I want to have a little thing here I want to talk about. In some cases, the one who has been sinned against, and that's the one who's been hurt, and this is how the sin comes in, sin hurt someone uh, against, is right to simply let it go, even if forgiveness has not been requested. And in other cases, the one sinned against needs to wait until the offending party has confessed and asked for forgiveness so that the relationship can be restored. This is if, if there's going to be a relationship, whether you're in the church, a member of the church, or just someone, uh, a co-worker or something like that there, or a loved one. This is the principle behind church discipline as outlined in Matthew 18, 15 to 17. If the confrontation of the sinner brings about confession, then reconciliation and forgiveness are offered. If the confrontation, the hurt, is unsuccessful, I'm looking for forgiveness there, excommunication from the church is the final result. And again, I want to make sure that we understand there are four to five steps. I mean, forgive me for that. And I'll look it up and bring it back to you later on uh, in the year here. We'll have that conversation again about um, church discipline. As I just said, if the confrontation is unsuccessful, meaning that forgiveness does not is not the outcome. Excommunicate, excommunication from the church is the final result. As and, and, and understand, being excommunicated from the church for whatever reason is not something that cannot be overcome. I'm being ex, excommunicated from this facility, this group of people, this group of saints uh, and followers. That doesn't mean that I'm excommunicated from God. And in that, if you did not follow the steps that are in the Bible for discipline, church discipline, if someone didn't follow it, then there is clearly opportunity to go directly to God and ask him to help you through the situation, whether it be to reconcile the relationship or to find where the fault was or the misunderstanding was and repair, repent within yourself. Because the main relationship is with God. God is, the church is God's church is God's. Okay. It ain't humans. 
It ain't the pastor. He may have a church, but the church specifically is not his or hers. As a general rule regarding petty slights and offenses in the family and in the church, a person should let them go. Turn the other cheek, as Jesus put it in Matthew 5 and 39. However, if the offense is such that turning the cheek is not possible, the offended party is obligated to go talk to the offender about it. Under no circumstances does one have the right to harbor resentment nurture, bitterness, or gossip about the offense. Here are some questions to ponder in relationship to forgiveness. Have I considered my sin and received God's forgiveness? Is there anyone whom I have sinned against and from whom I need to ask forgiveness? You know, it's like that old story about the um, the wayward woman um, who was brought to the, um, I guess, the gates of the community, and everyone wants to stone her. And God says to Jesus, says to him, "Well, you without sin, throw the first the first stone." Suddenly the whole gallery just emptied and there was no one there because we all sinned, you know, and we are not the judge. You know, man has rules and regulations and things like that, but that's man. But when you're looking at a biblical situation, you need to be careful and mindful of what you're concluding and what you're judging and what you're going to, what the outcome is going to be further. Is there anyone who has sinned against me and has asked me for forgiveness, but I have refused to forgive? Excuse me. Is there anyone I am holding a grudge against for past wrongs? If the I don't want to just gloss over that. Forgiving people for their for what they've done to you, hurt you, is not easy. Okay, it's not easy. Because if it was easy, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> and so we need to be mindful of that. Um, I can say for myself that there's probably been a number of situations that have come across, come about in my life where someone has offended me or um, hurt me or disrespected me or something. And uh, honestly, depending on who they were, I may have dealt with them a particular way or may not have dealt with them because of certain circumstances. But in the, at the end of the day, I still remember what you did. And every time your name comes across my mind, I remember right back to that moment when you hurt me. Now, I'm sitting here talking to you about forgiveness, and I know for me, I have not been successful in forgiving a number of people in my life for what they've done. I haven't even been able to forget what they've done. I might put it aside. I might over gloss over it, overlook it, or whatever but it's still sitting there and I'll come back to it at one moment or another. And we're going to talk about that whole thing about forgive and forget in a few minutes. If there is an unresolved issue, will I simply let it go or will I go talk to the offender about it? Continuing to hold a grudge is not a biblical option. Would I be willing to forgive if the offender asked me for forgiveness? I think I probably would. I, I, well, I, I think and I would like to think 
that if you hurt me and you came back and asked me to forgive you, I would forgive you. I would not forget, <laughs> but I because I ain't gonna let that happen again, not by you or anybody else. But yeah, I would like to think that I would do that. And I do know personally that there's some things that continue to bother me and I have to work hard at forgetting them. Let's talk about forgetting. But before that, let me put up my next uh, video. And let's see where am I at here. <laughs> uh, hold on. Forgiveness. Letting go of grudges and bitterness. When someone you care about hurts you, you can hold on to anger and resentment, or embrace forgiveness and move forward. Who hasn't been hurt by the actions or words of another? Perhaps a parent constantly criticized you growing up, a colleague sabotaged a project or your partner had an affair. Or maybe you've had a traumatic experience, such as being physically or emotionally abused by someone close to you. These wounds can leave lasting feelings of resentment, bitterness and anger, sometimes even hatred. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness means different things to different people. But in general, it involves an intentional decision to let go of resentment and anger. The act that hurt or offended you might always be with you. But working on forgiveness can lessen that act's grip on you. It can help free you from the control of the person who harmed you. Sometimes, forgiveness might even lead to feelings of understanding, empathy and compassion for the one who hurt you. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or excusing the harm done to you. It also doesn't necessarily mean making up with the person who caused the harm. Forgiveness brings a kind of peace that allows you to focus on yourself and helps you go on with life. Why is it so easy to hold a grudge? Being hurt by someone, particularly someone you love and trust, can cause anger, sadness and confusion. If you dwell on hurtful events or situations, grudges filled with resentment and hostility can take root. If you allow negative feelings to crowd out positive feelings, you might find yourself swallowed up by bitterness or a sense of injustice. Some people are naturally more forgiving than others. But even if you tend to hold a grudge, almost anyone can learn to be more forgiving. What happens if I can't forgive someone? Forgiveness can be hard, especially if the person who hurt you doesn't admit wrongdoing. What if the person I'm forgiving doesn't change? Getting another person to change isn't the point of forgiveness. It's about focusing on what you can control in the here and now. Think of forgiveness more about how it can change your life by bringing you peace, happiness, and emotional and spiritual healing. Forgiveness can take away the power the other person continues to have in your life. What if I'm the one who needs forgiveness? The first step is to honestly assess and acknowledge the wrongs you've done and how they have affected others. Avoid judging yourself too harshly. If you're truly sorry for something you've said or done and want forgiveness, consider reaching out to those you've harmed. Speak of your sincere sorrow or regret. Ask for forgiveness without making excuses. You can't force someone to forgive you. Others need to move to forgiveness in their own time. Remember, forgiveness is a process. Whatever happens, commit to treating others with compassion, empathy and respect. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's move on. Okay. While talking about forgiveness, the point of forgive and forget. In the Bible, you can find reference to the same idea of forgiving and forgetting as God talks about it. When you sin and you ask for forgiveness, he will forgive you and then not remember those that, that sin that you committed. When we talk about the word remember, 
from a biblical standpoint. We're not saying that it is forgotten. It is specifically the point of he will not act on it. Ah, he'll forgive you, but he will not bring it back to you and act on it. Okay, so we can understand that as forgiving and forgetting. Just as I said a few minutes ago, personally, things that have people who have hurt me, I don't forget what you did. I just hope, believe, want to. <laughs> not act on it because if I act on the fact that you hurt me after I've said that I forgive you, then I have not forgiven you, okay? I just put off acting on what you did, getting my revenge on what you did to me. I hope that was clear there is a story that I want to relay or remind you of uh, in the Bible, and it goes like this. Therefore, the kingdom of God is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay the master, ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him and said, be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. Interesting thought there, because how are you gonna pay a debt if you're in jail? But no. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how our Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. We often hear the phrase, forgive and forget, and this can be misleading. As a rejoinder to the phrase, sometimes we hear, I'll forgive, but I will not forget. To forgive and forget does not mean that a person who has been wronged develops some kind of sanctified amnesia. A person who has been abused will never forget that it happened. A person who has suffered from an adulterous spouse will always remember that experience. 
A person who has had a child abducted will probably think about that crime every day of his or hers she spends on earth. Yet it is possible for each of these people who have been sinned against to forgive and also to forget, as long as the biblical definition of forget is in view in the Bible. Remembering and forgetting do not have to do with retention of information in the brain. In Genesis 8 and 1, after the flood, God remembered Noah. Does this imply that for a while God had forgotten about Noah, misplaced him among the flood waters, and then one day he remembered and thought he had better check on him? No. The biblical concept of remembering has to do with choosing to act. And forgetting means refusing to act. Remembering has to do with choosing to act. And forgetting means refusing to act on the basis of something. God does not forget that people have sinned, but when he forgives, he chooses not to act on the basis of those sins. It is similar to the sentiment expressed in 1 Corinthians 13 and 5, where love keeps no record of wrongs. In the phrase, forgive and forget, the two terms are really synonyms. Both mean that the person who has forgiven will not continue to hold that sin against the wrongdoer or take it into account in future interactions. A person may remember that it happened, but he or she can choose not to act on it. This is biblical forgetting. Many wonder about forgiving people who have sinned, but have not confessed, repented, or asked for forgiveness. That's a whole nother situation. Let me see what I have in my... Often hear the phrase forgive and forget, and this can be misleading. As a rejoinder to this phrase, sometimes we hear, I'll forgive, but I will never forget. To forgive and forget does not mean that a person who has been wronged develops some kind of sanctified amnesia. A person who has been abused will never forget that it happened. A person who has suffered from an adulterous spouse will always remember that experience. A parent who has had a child abducted will probably think about that crime every day he or she spends on earth. Yet, it is possible for each of these people who have been sinned against to forgive and also to forget, as long as the biblical definition of forget is in view. In the Bible, remembering and forgetting do not have to do with retention of information in the brain. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 1, after the flood, God remembered Noah. Does this imply that for a while God had forgotten about Noah, misplaced him among the flood waters, and then one day he remembered and thought he had better check on him? No, the biblical concept of remembering has to do with choosing to act, and forgetting means refusing to act on the basis of something. When the Bible says God remembered Noah, it means that God chose to act on Noah's behalf and sent a wind to help the waters recede more rapidly. God promises that, under the new covenant, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 34, cf. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, 10 17. God does not forget that people have sinned, but, when he forgives, he chooses not to act on the basis of those sins. It is similar to the sentiment expressed in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 where, love keeps no record of wrongs. In the phrase forgive and forget, the two terms are really synonyms. Both mean that the person who has forgiven will not continue to hold that sin against the wrongdoer or take it into account in future interactions. A person may remember that it happened, but he or she can choose not to act on it, that is biblical forgetting. 
Many wonder about forgiving people who have sinned but have not confessed, repented, or asked for forgiveness. Sometimes in court, the victims of a crime will get to speak to the perpetrator before the sentence is passed. Often the victims will tell how the crime has impacted them and ask the judge to impose the strictest sentence. But, on occasion, the victim will say to the perpetrator, I forgive you. Is this forgiveness valid if the convicted criminal has not confessed and asked for forgiveness? The answer is both, yes, and, no. On one hand, the victim often forgives the criminal so that he or she will not be eaten up by hatred for the criminal. The forgiveness granted by the victim in court does not absolve the criminal from any legal penalties, so the state is still right to prosecute. On the other hand, God forgives people when they confess their sin and ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness only comes through faith in Christ, which involves a spiritual transformation. In the courtroom example, even if the victim forgives the criminal, there can never be the establishment or restoration of a relationship unless the criminal confesses his sin and actually seeks forgiveness. The goal of biblical forgiveness is not only to benefit the victim but to restore the sinner. This cannot happen without the acknowledgement of sin on the sinner's part. Therefore, in some cases the one who has been sinned against is right not to let it go until the sinner has asked for forgiveness. Good parents should be willing to forgive once their wayward child has confessed and asked for forgiveness, but they are right to withhold forgiveness until their child has taken the steps necessary to allow the reconciliation. It would be foolish for a father to simply forgive his teenage son for disobeying his rules and the law by drinking and driving if the son does not acknowledge that what he did was wrong. However, the father should be willing to forgive when the conditions are right. In some situations, Granting unrequested forgiveness cheapens the concept and ignores the seriousness of the offense. The Case of the Two Sons Featuring U.S. Marshal Harry Bailey Volume 12 of the Parables of Life series Twin Brothers A valuable list of names. A string of robberies. A Supreme Court judge. Leaving two cops dead. Both twins accused of conspiracy. Bailey has to prove which one is the thief. Sons by Larry Montgomery Sr. Available at the Authors Corner online or email Montgomery Business at Hotmail.com. Okay, so we're going to wind this up, and in doing so, I want to make sure that we have a good understanding of what forgiveness means, not only to us as Christians, but also whether the person who has offended you is also we want to note that forgiveness is not only good for you as the Christian, but it's also good for the person who caused or created 
the sin that hurt you. And so it's kind of a blessing in disguise, if you will. Um, nowhere alone has God said, this life is going to be easy for one reason or another. There'll be lessons that need to be learned. There will be times when God uses you, puts you in a difficult or challenging situation so that others might have the opportunity to see in its reality what God can and will do for those who believe and trust him. And yeah, that 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 sounds all good, uh, Minister, about you know what God can do. But when that shoe is on my foot, I'm not really thinking a whole lot about I'm an example for those who don't believe or don't know God and who He is. And so yeah, it's easy to see, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You know, I've had to wear that other shoe a few times in my life. So I only thank God for the opportunity because he brought me through it. So I only thank God for the opportunity to go through it, that he thought enough of me to use me to be an example to someone else that they might seriously consider becoming a believer in Jesus Christ. And so let me close on that note and I will see you again, God willing, next week if the creek don't rise. Thanks be to God. You have been listening to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Senior and Friends. Join us again next time as we continue to labor in this vineyard with an eye towards bringing the words of God to those who are interested. Remember, the sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group. TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www. The Author's Corner. Online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. May God continue to bless you and yours until next time. God bless.